اکبر لا ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وجاهد في سبيل الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته الصالحين الغر الميامين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا ثم اما بعد brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الاخر وذكر الله كثيرا Indeed in the messenger of Allah is a beautiful example for you to follow for anyone who hopes to meet Allah in the last day and remembers Allah much The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is our role model for every aspect of our lives as individuals and as communities. Brothers and sisters, have you ever wondered what it would be like to attend the Masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to enter that space in which The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught and led worship and did so many other things. What would it be like to enter upon that masjid? What were some of the things that you would see happening in that masjid if you were to enter upon it on a random day? The fact is brothers and sisters that the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a place of many things. It was first and foremost a place of worship. No doubt about that. But it was also a place of da'wah where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would receive delegates from non-Muslim countries and invite them to Islam and inform them and educate them about the beautiful teachings that he came with his masjid was also a place where he had held meetings he would meet with various segments of the society including his own sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum and plan and strategize It was also a place where medical care was provided after the battles when Muslims would come back wounded they would be treated in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
It was a masjid where you would find celebrations. It is narrated in the books of Hadith that on the days of Eid, the Abyssinians would come into the masjid and perform and people would gather around and watch and celebrate the days of Eid. The masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was a place of socialization. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he would finish Salat al-Fajr, the Sahaba would gather around and they would talk and socialize and laugh. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would sit and listen and smile. The masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was a place for all of these things. And yes, it was also a place for education. I want to give you a few scenes from the Masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to give us an appreciation of what it would be like to enter upon that masjid on a random day. This one scene is from Sunan ibn Majah in which ibn Majah relates that Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emerged one day and entered the masjid. Now imagine this scene. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enters from the entrance of the masjid and enters upon the masjid and he found before him two gatherings. So there are two gatherings inside the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One was engaged in Qur'anic recitation and invoking Allah. While the other was engaged in scholarly discourse. One is engaged in reciting the book of Allah and doing dhikr, acts of devotion. The other one is engaged in studying and discussing law, scholarly discourse. The Prophet ﷺ looked at those two groups and he made a remark and he said, in each of these groups there is khayr, there is good. These people are reciting the Qur'an and invoking Allah. And if Allah wills, He will grant their request. And if He wills, He will withhold it. While these people are engaged in scholarly discourse. And then he said, and I have been sent as a teacher. In Nama Bu'istu Mu'allima, he said. And he then sat down with the second group. This is a scene, brothers and sisters, that shows us what used to happen on a normal day inside the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There were groups that would gather to remember Allah. There were groups that were gathered to learn and educate and review and teach the deen of Allah. And these are not children. These are not children's classes. These are not children's classes where the parents come and drop off their kids and leave. The parents themselves are in these classes. They are the ones sitting down and solidifying their faith so that they have something to give to their own children. Take another scene. Ubadah ibn Samit radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that whenever an immigrant arrived in Medina, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would assign one of us to teach him the Qur'an. So whenever someone would perform hijrah to come to Medina, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would assign one of the residents of Medina to teach this immigrant the Qur'an. And the Prophet's mosque used to reverberate from the noise of the Qur'an that was being recited until it got to a point that the Prophet ﷺ instructed them to lower their voices so that they avoid making mistakes, so that they're not confused from the recitation of each other. Brothers and sisters, this tradition of learning and teaching in the masajid 
continues from the days of the Prophet ﷺ until our day. So if you were to go to Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca, or if you were to go to Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi in Medina, or if you were to go to al Jami' Al-Umawi in Dimashq, or if you were to go to Jami' Al-Azhar Al-Sharif in Egypt, you would find this tradition alive. You would find that in these masajid, there are people who come to learn their deen. Not just children, brothers and sisters. Education in masajid is not only for children. And the classes that are held in these masajid are not meant to be only for scholars and advanced students of ilm. I myself attended some of those classes in some of those masajid. And to the right of me, there would be a pharmacist. And to the left of me would be an engineer who is there in the morning to attend an advanced class in fiqh or aqidah or usul. And in that same gathering, you have advanced students of knowledge also. And then after the class, the pharmacist would go to his pharmacy and the engineer would go back to school or go back to work and the advanced students of knowledge would go to their other classes. This tradition continues, brothers and sisters. And it is our hope that we are continuing that tradition right here in Collin County, right here in Plano Masjid. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to continue that. Now I want to mention another scene, a different kind of scene, also from the Masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is related by Imam Muslim in his Sahih that Muawiyah ibn al-Hakam al-Sulami says, one day I was praying behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and suddenly a man sneezed. So I said, while I am in my prayer, I said, Allah. So the people started to look at me. So I said, Woe to you, why are you looking at me? So the people started to slap their hands on their thighs. So when I saw that, I realized they're trying to make me quiet, so I became quiet until the Prophet ﷺ had finished his prayer. فَبِ أَبِي وَأُمِّي فَبِ أَبِي وَأُمِّي مَا رَأَيْتُ مُعَلِّمًا قَبْلَهُ وَلَا بَعْدَهُ أَحْسَنَ تَعْلِيمًا مِنْهِ فَوَاللَّهِ مَا كَهَرَنِي وَمَا ضَرَبَنِي وَلَا شَتَمَنِي قَالَ إِنَّ هَذِهِ الصَّلَاةَ لَا يَصْلُحُ فِيهَا شَيْءٌ مِنْ كَلَامِ النَّاسِ إِنَّمَا هِيَ التسبيح والتكبير وقراءة القرآن أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Imagine brothers and sisters if you come to the masjid or you, and you find that someone is doing something in their prayer that they're not supposed to do. Maybe you come and you find that the row is starting from the right or the left instead of the center where it's supposed to start. What would you do? I know that many of us, after the prayer is over, would go and shout at the people for not doing what they were supposed to do in the masjid. And perhaps cause them to leave the masjid in tears, never to come back to the masjid again. But listen to what happened to this man. He says that after he finished the prayer, he says, May my mother and father be sacrificed for the Prophet ﷺ. For by Allah, I never saw a teacher before him or after him that was better than him. Fawallahi, I swear by Allah, he did not speak harshly with me. He did not yell at me. He did not shout at me. But he said, 
to me in هذه الصلاة that these prayers that we perform they are acts of devotion in which we do not speak worldly speech. We do not speak to people in these prayers, but these are acts of devotion in which we glorify Allah and magnify Allah and recite the Qur'an. Brothers and sisters, this scene shows us a few things. It shows us that the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not just attended by the likes of Abu Bakr and Umar, who are the greatest of the Sahaba. It was attended by people who didn't even know the basics of their deen. But they were not afraid of attending the masjid lest they might do something wrong and then they're going to be kicked out of the masjid or people are going to shout at them or judge them. They came and prayed behind the Prophet ﷺ. His masjid was attended by everyone, the knowledgeable and the ignorant, the righteous and the sinner. His masjid was attended by al-mu'allafatu qulubuhum that are mentioned in the Qur'an as a category of the recipients of the zakat. Al-mu'allafatu qulubuhum Those who are struggling with their faith. They would attend the masjid. His masjid was attended by the old and the young. We all have heard of the ten famous companions that were promised paradise. Most of us have heard of them. Did you know that six out of those ten were teenagers when they accepted Islam? لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهُ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah is a beautiful example for you to follow. The Masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should be our model when we think about how our Masajid should be functioning. And so we have to keep that as the aim, as the goal, and ask ourselves, how are we doing? How close are we from that model? And how far are we from that model? Brothers and sisters, the fact is that today, many second and third generation Muslims do not feel welcome in our masajid. The youth feel out of place and they feel judged at the masajid. If a young man walks in to the masjid wearing shorts or having a different kind of hairstyle, wearing tattoos or earrings, what do you think is going to happen to that person? Brothers and sisters, there was a companion who walked into the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ and urinated in the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ dealt with him with such kindness, such kindness, such patience, such emotional intelligence that the man would come back to the masjid. But oftentimes we deal with these situations in such a way that the person will never come back to the masjid or will be hard pressed to want to come back again. And as a result of this, brothers and sisters, there is a movement in this country which is called the Unmosked Movement, where many young people are being unmosked. They're leaving the masajid. And some of them are forced to build what are called safe spaces or third spaces. Spaces other than the masajid where they could go and be themselves and not have to worry about being judged. Not have to worry about being judged for their slow progress in their own faith. Brothers and sisters, we need to 
always strive to achieve the model of the Prophet's mosque in our masajid. We need to re-mosque our youth. Because no matter how beneficial these safe spaces or third spaces may be, they will never replace the house of Allah. They will never be the house of Allah. Masajid are the houses of Allah. And they are virtues of a masjid that you can't find in any third space. The spiritual status of the masjid, the fact that it is the house of Allah, the fact that people who come to the masjid are called guests of Allah. The fact that the masajid are illuminated to the angels in the heavens, as the ahadith indicate, that the masajid appear to the angels as stars appear to us in a dark night. They are illuminated to the angels. That's a unique virtue of the masjid that cannot be replaced by any other place. The masajid are the most beloved spaces on earth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The masajid are places that are attended by angels. When we have study sessions in masajid, they are attended by angels and enveloped by throngs and throngs of angels. And you can imagine what blessing and harmony and peace and spirituality that brings to that gathering. That's specific to a masjid. Every step that one takes to come towards the masjid elevates the person and removes their sins. Every step that you take to come to the masjid elevates your rank and removes your sins. You can't earn that by going to any other place. The Prophet ﷺ said that if you see a person regularly attending the masjid, then that is proof that that is a person of faith. That is proof that that person has iman. Regular attendance of the masjid is a proof of one's faith. You can't replace that by any other place. And people who will be under the shade of Allah, on the day when there is no shade except His shade. The seven people who will be under His shade on that day, among them are who? Among them is a man whose heart is suspended in the masajid. رَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسَاجِد بِالْمَسَاجِد You can't replace that with any other space, brothers and sisters. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد Brothers and sisters you all know that we are living in times when there is such a rise in Islamophobia that is unprecedented in this country and you can only imagine the impact of that on our youth. Many brothers are changing their names. Many sisters are taking off their hijab. And it's become difficult to be known to be a Muslim. And it reminds one of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he said, 
الصابر فيهم على دينه كالقابض على الجمرة that there will come a time when someone who patiently holds on to their deen to their religion will be like someone who is holding on to a burning piece of coal in these times brothers and sisters we need to support one another we need to provide we need to make our masajid safe spaces we need to make our masajid a safe space for every believer because al masjid bayt kull mu'min because the masjid is a home of every believer this is our second home brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the fitya the youth in surah al kahf that in times of turmoil those youth when they stuck together and went into that cave that's what protected them from the turmoil that they found themselves in our masajid need to become caves for our use and we need to stick together it's very difficult to survive the tides individually allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in surah al kahf واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداه والعشي يريدون وجهه that be patient along with others together observe patience and persevere brothers and sisters this masjid alhamdulillah strives to achieve the model of the masjid of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by providing all the services that we talked about at the beginning of the khutbah that were provided in the masjid of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam including educational programs for all ages for youth as well as adults for brothers as well as sisters and brothers and sisters we strive in this masjid to provide a safe space for our youth as well and today brothers and sisters after salatul juma you will have an opportunity to contribute towards the operations of this masjid towards the maintenance of this masjid brothers and sisters take advantage of this opportunity because this is a golden opportunity your contribution towards this masjid means a lot to the muslim community in collin county to islam in collin county in these very interesting times that we are living in this opportunity doesn't come all the time throughout the year as you walked in you probably received a pledge card if you didn't when you go out you will see tables you will have kiosks and you will have the opportunity to become a regular contributor to this masjid that continues to grow every day that continues to grow in population and in the amount of services that it provides every day may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire all of us to contribute to this second home of ours to this house of allah to this place that we hope will continue to be a safe space for our youth to this space that we hope will continue to be a beacon of light a lighthouse to the muslim community as well as the larger community around us اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك يا مولانا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله ان الله يأمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون قوموا الى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله